Welcome everybody here in Twitch chats and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on over there for some Naya Feather. We're going to go ahead and try this over in Mythic. We've played it a couple of times about a week ago and it was a whole lot of fun to play and it felt pretty strong. So we're going to go ahead and take it over to the ranked queues today um, and give it a try. So basically this is really a Naya aggro deck based around Hero of Precinct 1 to be honest. It's not really a Feather deck. Um, but calling it Naya Feather because it's because Feather is just a I don't know Naya Hero. Bleh. This like we do have like our our Feather um, good interactions here with Thrash for removal, uh, Collision Colossus really the Colossus part and then Integrity as well. Um, so we have we have some stuff with Feather, but basically we are just so. The Feather decks, like I built this deck because I had a donation to build a Feather deck, and so that's where this deck came from. But the, all the Feather decks that I've seen are just kind of gimmicky and just really relying on like Feather and Dreadhorde Arcanist and using just a bunch of pump spells on those and hoping that they don't die and then hoping your pump spells like all resolve and all that kind of stuff and and taking over from there. And I haven't really seen any that, that have that much success or that I was very impressed with at all. So here what we're going with is we're just going with a, a lot of good cards, which is really what you want to do in Standard. You want your deck full of good cards. So we just have cards that are pretty decent on their own. Also, we have like a bunch of small synergies everywhere. But we just have a lot of, you know, a lot more creatures. Uh, we have a lot of haste, which is important in this format. Um, and we're just going to be, you know, attacking our opponent where we have like a small uh, pump spell sub theme. You know, so this is kind of like a limited deck almost if you like playing limited. And then with that small uh, pump spell sub theme, then like the feather can trigger and everything. So we have like those 11 cards that I talked about. But all 11 of these cards, these are not just like pump spells that are just like draft commons. Like these are all pump spells that can do other things. You know, like if, in if you don't need to use integrity, if, you if your opponent's like using a bunch of removal, killing your stuff, you can, you know, use intervention and just have a an expensive lightning helix uh, that certainly comes up at times. Or maybe you need to kill something in a pinch. Um, and then it, of course, like Colossus, this one's like the closest to being just like the pump spell, but like sometimes you need to kill some, some kind of flyer with collision and thrash is pretty nice. Like thrash is just removal for, uh, creatures and planeswalkers. Like I think this is just an, this is a kind of an underrated card cause it's instant speed and it's not, your creatures don't fight. You just deal damage equal to the power to either the creature or planeswalker. So lots of planeswalkers around these days, you can thrash them. And then if, if you don't have your creatures out, playing four mana four fours is perfectly reasonable and standard. So we have threats also, four mana four fours. Is that is that spectacular? No. But there are times that you need to um, just have four mana four fours, you know, like against like the red deck or something like that. Oh man, it, yeah. Blossoming defense would be amazing if we could if we could have that in here. Um but yeah, the one change I'm making is I'm going to try this green-white Ajani, the new Ajani, instead of the old one. And I don't know if it's better, honestly. I like the old one quite a bit. The The other Ajani uh, can, you know, tick up and put some counters on, on creatures, but can also bring back uh, Hero, Vindicator, and especially, like, 10th District Legionnaire for, for like, a haste threat. Um, works really well with... Like, these cards work really well with, like, the old Ajani. But... I don't know. I wanted to try this one too. I know I've struggled a little bit against Model Red with this deck at times, and maybe like this tick up gain three life could be nice. Giving our creatures vigilance can maybe help us win some races. And basically, this Ajani will be better if we are ahead and we have like Hero Precinct One doing its thing and like making a bunch of tokens. Then we can put counters on all of them. This Ajani will be better then. But the other Ajani was better if you're like behind and didn't really have anything. You could return some of like you know bring some of these things back. So I don't I don't know if I'll like this Ajani. So that's something when we're playing the games to be thinking about whether we want the other Ajani or this one. Um, or honestly, maybe we want like Chandra, honestly, in this slot. Uh, just you know, trying out another card. So that 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 slot could maybe change. Um, that's what I have right now. Sideboard. I got some Rhythm of the Wilds to give us even more haste and make our creatures a little bigger. Maybe there's better sideboard card than that. But I was actually been been pretty happy with it but against like that's like our one thing to bring in against um against like a bunch of planeswalker decks if we want some more haste i don't know i don't know if we need that 
or not. I am taking out one Harpooner for a third Clarion for the aggro matchups. Love Clarion because, <clears throat> you know, we can, if we're behind, if we, like, don't have the creatures and they, like, use, like, shocks, lightning strikes, kill our creatures, we can just Clarion or against, like, Mono White and just deal three damage. If we're ahead, if we actually have, like, Hero Precinct 1s out and stuff like that and we have, and we are going wide, then we, you just use Clarion and give, give your creatures lifelink to help make sure that you win the race. Um, but yeah, there we go. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Oh, yeah, that's true. Healing Grace is awesome against Mono Red in a deck like this. That is true. That'd be a good one. Yeah, Healing Grace works amazingly with Feather. Good start. <laughs> uh, well, no white mana. Hopefully we draw white mana. All right, white mana. So we're both on six. It looks like we're probably going to be playing Domri and fighting the Llanowar Elf next turn. Definitely doing that. Okay, never mind fighting Incubation Druid. I don't really want Domri to die, so we'll just sit back here. I don't know. Maybe I should just attack. If they want to trade a Llanowar Elf for a Domri, no, that's still not a very good trade for me. Never mind. Come and destroy! Oh, it's just Frill Mystic. Oh, not Frill Mystic. Frill Mystic. Oh, can't be countered. Oh, right. <laughs> I don't read my own cards. That's true. Can't be countered. Because of Domri. <laughs> I definitely want to just let that be countered. All right, so we got game one against Bant Stuff. <laughs> yeah, we're supposed to read the cards? What is that about? So we got Clarion. There's... Why would you want Cindervines in this matchup? I don't... Cindervines is horrible in this matchup. It's literally worse than every single card in the deck. Like probably in the whole seventy-five. It's probably the worst card in the entire in the entire seventy-five in this matchup. Clarion though can uh, you know can kill a whole bunch of mana creatures, which could be nice if that's what we want to be doing with our life. Unclear if that is what we want to be doing with our life. Kind of like just submitting. Oketra is obviously going to be just like the biggest problem. But I 
I have nothing for Oketra, really. Yeah, we could try to go over the top with the Lyra. But we got all these things to go over the top. We're good. Let's just, let's just go main deck. Uh, yeah, you just... Okay, you thought we were playing against something else. Gotcha. All right. Let's see if we can curve out like that again. That was a good curve out. Mm. Not nearly as good of a curve out. But the, the Feather Colossus combo is kind of unbeatable. If, if we get there, basically, if we survive long enough. And <clears throat> curving out perfectly now. Unfortunately, Plains Colossus doesn't work too well. Wow. Talk about rude. Oh, not very rude. <laughs> The cat buddy, that's your favorite. I'm known for my excellent timing. Don't worry, I got this. All right, well now they're curving out perfectly, stealing my hero, then having little to ferry. Considering Aurelia, Aurelia here, considering Tajik attack Teferi. I've got time. Teferi is definitely annoying with pump spells, of course. Can't play pump spells instant, spe instant speed. Good card. Only time will tell. So of course the plan was Domri and Hero. Um, nope, Hawkeye's not on the sofa today. No feather for us.
Yeah, we could we could collision our own feather. Really? A 7-7? Seven, seven? Can't be a 6-6. Six, six. So a whole bunch of melodies. Maybe do I need a, do I need a Tristani in my sideboard? Bunch of these melodies and crap. Hmm. Melodies and manipulation. I feel like I should be Clarioning. They're just so reliant on mana creatures. And a bunch of them. Nah. Let's play Coil instead of Integrity. Or maybe, uh, let's go two coil, two clarion instead of the integrities. And then I'll cut one feather because of that. And I guess play the other clarion. King J! Thanks to the donation deck there. I've been grinding Arena with Selesnya Cat's deck. For a buddy of mine that loves playing cats, and after a few changes, it's been performing better. I just don't know what to, what's missing to put it over the top. Thanks, King J. I'll check that out. Uh, why did I put these clarions in here? I need pump spells to go with Vindicator and Feather. <laughs> if this was Integrity, this hand would look a lot better. All right, I like the look of it. So, King J, do you want me to play the deck, you know, on stream and everything, or do you want me to play it off stream? And... And work on it? What'd you like? Hey, what's up, Alder 2? On stream? Okay, cool. And then do you have a day and a time you'd like me to play it? Everything's open. Looks like killing those mana creatures is pretty important. Okay, tomorrow, what, uh, which slot? I got saved here. First, second, third, or fourth? Oh, duh. I shouldn't play that. It's obvious. Like, they just, yeah, they're just playing Frilled Mystic here. I just shouldn't have played that. Sorry, I, yeah, I, I didn't pay cl close enough attention. Should have, should not have played that. First, okay. So that Clarion was clutch. That Clarion 
Yeah, even without the green mana. The Clarion just r wiping out their two mana creatures. Real clutch. Alright, 1-0 with oh, Nine Feather. Yeah, it, it was Boros Feather. Still won. Yeah, rank 25. That's up there. Ooh. Hope they don't have a removal spell, because this 10th District Legionnaire are going to be hitting hard. <clears throat> okay, well. Let's lead with that. And hopefully draw land, and I can go Legionnaire plus Integrity. Come on, land. Land. Oh, we are doing it. I'll keep that. So in my next turn, I'm probably going to go Domri, tick up, add mana, integrity. I am not going to sit this one out. I'll protect you. Gonna make them chump block basically. I know I'm wasting a lot of damage, but I think that's okay. Getting this Paradise Druid out of here is nice. You just let me know if you're up for round two. Should slow them down enough for us to win, I think. Especially with back to back spell breakers here. And you know, Domri can just fight. Ravnica deserves its demise. And that's thirteen. That'll do. Hmm. Yeah, our deck's real explosive, for sure. <clears throat> I like those integrities. Ugh, those are nice. All right, so Wild Growth Walker is like the card that will beat us. If they have Wild Growth Walker and then explore a whole bunch, that's like the one thing that will beat us. So I think we need the Lava Coils in to try to handle Wild Growth Walker. It's just what what's the card that I'm taking out if I'm bringing those in? I'm certainly bringing those in. Is it Vindicator? Kind of like integrity. What what's my worst cards? Is it... All right, yeah, I'll go. I'll go vindicator. And probably need to take out one of the spells. I guess one of the integrities. Yeah. Okay. Thrash it can also be a removal spell for us to kill Wild Growth Walkers. 
Definitely, I don't want to take out Thrash. I want those removal spells too. And plus, Thrash Thrash kills Planeswalkers. Now this is definitely a Thrash matchup. Well, we're not beating their best hands here on the draw with this, but we can beat a bad hand. Assuming we draw lands, that is. I, I don't think I would have kept this on the play because it's a lot harder to draw the land, but with the three draw steps on the draw, I was thinking that we'll draw a land in one of the three draw steps. Sounds like a reasonable thing to do, draw a land in three draw steps. Yeah. Reasonable. All right. So we've got to make this 4-4 right about now. I would like to ask about any Luna to the library. So if they would have double blocked there, hmm. certainly considering double integrity. I So I need to pressure their life total as much as possible, as you can tell. Or like, you know, if they're looking for Command the Dread Horde, I need to, I need to deal as much damage as I can to them, basically. There's no Wild Growth Walkers out yet, which is good. Massacre Girl is kind of a problem. Do I cast two Integrities or Legionnaire and Integrity? I guess Legionnaire and Integrity. What's up, Budacris? So this is six damage coming in right now. Put them down to ten. Do I want to save the Legionnaire, or do I want to do an extra two and put them down to eight? I think it's better to save the Legionnaire. Well. Well, if they don't have a command, they can, they can grab command right now. So they could be at ten or be at eight. So Massacre Girl doesn't do a whole lot. Well, I guess Massacre Girl... Yeah, actually, being at 8 is better. Than 10. If they go Massacre Girl, I can't really have them... Um, I can't let them get, like, multiple other creatures that... If they get, like, Massacre Girl plus... Because if they're at 10, they could go Massacre Girl, Crowl Harpooner... Um, branch Walker, and then like the Branch Walker, Crowl Harpooner, die that trades up to have Legionnaire die that trades up to have all the branch the Spellbreakers die. It does drop them to one, but then they have like the four four on defense and everything. But I guess obviously at that point, if we draw a land, we have intervention. But I think this is better. So crap, they hit a Wild Growth Walker. Lucky. <clears throat> so they gain eight. Or nine, I mean. Sorry, they gain nine, go to ten. I 
That was really unfortunate. So not only did they draw, they actually had to command the Dread Horde because they, they weren't ticking up for it. They milled over a Wild Growth Walker. I guess I should just play Hero Precinct 1 first. It's a good block. It's a good block. I should have played Hero Precinct 1 first. This is my only play. Uh, I don't. I don't know. The question is, what's the what's the best way to attack this Dreadhorde deck besides being super aggressive? And I. I don't know. I don't know the, the best future. way. I don't have an answer. Well, we came pretty close being on the draw there with that, sl that slow of a hand. Came pretty close there. We don't want this Vindicator. Feels like Aurelia is too slow. Maybe maybe Aurelia is too slow. Maybe I want, especially on the play, want Vindicator and Integrity and just cut Aurelia's or cut a Johnny. Yeah, I don't need this thing. Cut a Johnny and one Aurelia. Aurelia is not bad, especially with Swift Blade Vindicator. Um. I don't think we need the Ajani's. Ugh. Don't have any pump for Vindicator, so I think I'm just leave leading with 10th, 10th District Legionnaire. I guess I have the Aurelia that's kind of like pump. Can we draw land, please? Please. Come on. At least we got a Wild Growth Walker exiled. That's good. We got another one. Where's our lands? I mean, specifically red mana right now, so we can double spell next turn. All spells wouldn't be so bad either, like Colossus, for example. Good news, we got the two Wild Growth Walkers exiled. The good news. Play Vindicator. Why, why are they ditching Vraska? 
Like, isn't Frasca good? Basically, I just want this in play so I can start attacking with it, but it's just better to play this mana-wise because, like, the Legionnaire doesn't really do anything. But why are they ditching Vraska? Vraska kills Feather. Like, do they want to command the Dreadhorde it back? But that costs life. There's nothing else in graveyards. Oh, that's a killer. That card's a killer. Completely forgot about that card. I should have been attacking with the. I should. I need to trade with the 2 2. Seriously, a third Wild Growth Walker? Kidding me? Wish I was attacking with that Legionnaire. I just forgot about Massacre Girl. Wild Growth Walker, what a uh, what a mess. What a mess. GG. So if I would have if I would have been attacking with a Legionnaire more and just if I would have just traded with that earlier, I think I like I I think I messed this game up with that. Because then the Feather and Aurelia wouldn't have been wouldn't have died to Masker Girl. So I just I just messed this game up. Wasn't Masker Girl was not on my radar. But finding three Wild Growth Walkers and 15 cards and all those Explore creatures, that was just a really nice draw for our opponent also. Ugh, one and one. Yeah, I went down to 61 now. Alright, white mana. White mana.
So of course, waiting till next turn so I can play hero and be able to integrity the hero against a pump spell, or sorry, against a burn spell. They have light up. Yeah, we were at 25 last last round, but then we lost. Yeah, Mono Red's good. Turn 2 st Steamkin on the play that your opponent can't answer. Usually is unbeatable. We'll see if we can, but I, I don't have high hopes in us winning this game. I am glad we have this in our deck. I'm glad we have the Deafening like the three Deafening, Deafening Clarions in our sideboard right now. I just want to draw lands for a while. So obviously the Firebrand can finish off the hero if it's a 3 damage burn spell. Silent Gravestone is just not that difficult for the 4 color Dreadhorde deck to deal with considering they have Little Teferi, Vraska, and Big Teferi that all deal with it pretty easily. I took a couple of shocks. Dang. That's a card. That's a turn. Just gotta hope they don't have a burn spell, basically. Maybe they just have two lands left over there. You never know. I gotta just try. I gotta try, though. Maybe now they just have two lands. Come on, just have two lands, please. Two lands. Come on, two lands. We have a small chance if they just have nothing but lands for a while. It's a small chance. I will teach you humanity. We need one one more turn for them to break. How do you see the benefits of peace? At least at least one more turn. Okay. No, that's going to kill me exactly. Ugh. Dang. Yeah, I need one more turn. Well, really two more turns.
Oh, that's close. All right, Dawnbringer, Coil, Clarion, Knight of Autumn. We'll take out the Vindicator. Take out Colossus. Take out Domri. Domri can fight. Tajik dying to shock's annoying. But it does prevent damage to other things. Domri can have us fight, but. Alright, so we need to cut down on our three mana slots. Like, I guess maybe it's just both. Yeah, I guess it's just both. Yeah. Alright. <clears throat> yeah. Johnny's tick up was just like give your creatures lifelink. Hmm. What if they switch to Johnny and Soren? And Johnny had your creatures have lifelink. Just all the time. Soren was like, your creatures have vigilance during your turn. This deck does have amazing artwork. Yeah, and like the, the decks, the cards in this deck are are nice to look at. Like, yeah, like this, I like this deck in that respect. Man. Our, our mana's not always great. It's kind of hard to mulligan the, th the three land with good mana hand, but our, our hand doesn't do anything until turn four. We have four drop, four drop, four drop, four drop, unfortunately. I still kind of want to keep. Like, on the draw, this is easily a mulligan, but I kind of want to keep this on the play. Just because, like, mul our deck doesn't really mulligan that well. Um, but no, I'm gonna I'm gonna mulligan. All right, well, good mulligan. We got this card. That was the card that I wanted. This is the card I wanted to look look for. If it's not a land, it's going to the bottom. That's not a land. It goes to the bottom. Hey, what's up, Valor Axial? Thanks for that resub there with Twitch Prime. Thank you very much. Fifth sub of the day. gonna do it this way so I don't shock in. I'll just play Aurelia next turn. Please don't kill my Aurelia. No blocks. Likely going to be playing this as the threat. Likely. Unless our opponent plays Phoenix. Just play a bunch of creatures. Uh. 
All right, well, we got another Clarion. I'll just use it. <laughs> hey, Eco P. Yeah, this is just the name I started using. Tossians MTG. Just a while ago, years ago. Not looking so good for us. We're definitely running out of cards here. Didn't get any kind of two for one with that other Clarion. Opponent gets two for one here. Love it. I will teach you humility if I must. Minusing doesn't make a lot of sense to like make the um make it pretty easy for them to kill the Ajani. Bad news is that Johnny's dead. Good news is they're like out of cards now. Uh, Don, the Johnny did. I don't know. Trade with some things, I guess. Oh gosh. Why frenzy? Why is the last card always frenzy? Yeah, out of cards. He says. Famous last words. Why not? Steam can. Go crazy. Didn't even hit a single land. That's five straight cards. Ugh. Something that costs two mana. Hopefully, hopefully they can't play it right now. <laughs> No shock. All right. We need Knight of Autumn to blow up this frenzy. Knight of Autumn. So that's 16 cards we fought through so far with our six. Guess we have two over here. And they have three over here. Be able to mentor onto the spellbreaker, make it a 4 4. <clears throat> Hit in for 8, put him down to 8. I think we've had, the, had these Clarions. Uh, more Steamkins. Just never stop Steamkinning.
Maybe hit two lands in a row? They have to block with both their creatures. They'll go down to two. But obviously they can just hit 10 points of burn here. But we make it so like they don't just have, you know, otherwise they could have just blocked with the uh, Pyromancer, for example, there and stayed at one. First two points of burn. Yeah, if I would have played the Spellbreaker before that clearing on that previous turn to try to get Lifelink on it, the, the Spellbreaker would have died. I had to wait till after I Clarion and dealt three to everything to play my 3-3. Three, three. gone through <laughs> they have their library is 20 cards we have 42 <laughs> gone through 22 other cards than we have we fought through the extra 22 cards deafening clarion is nice got there deafening clarion and johnny the great hearted both very important in that game Am I supposed to play Cinder Vines just to blow up Frenzy? It seems pretty loose. These are basically going to be four mana four fours. I'll play one over a Thrash Threat. I don't love it. Yeah, there you go. The deck the deck list is right there in chat for you. No white mana. This thing costs double white. I think that's a mulligan. Opponent kept six their hand opponent kept their hand really, really fast. I didn't even have a hand generated yet, and my opponent already kept. Clarion, Clarion, Clarion. Clarion, Clarion. Another land? Really? After keeping five lands in our 23 land deck, we draw two more and then scrying a spell. Clarion. And obviously the lands we're drawing are all shock lands. So I have to shock next turn, even to play Lyra. Lyra.
still. All right, one and two. Some real close games there. All three games were really close. Well, I don't know if that last game was really close. We just had a Dawnbringer in play. I don't know if that would really count as really close, though. Bleh. Yeah, their <clears throat> yep, their hand was good though. A lot better than than mine, that mulligan. All right, green mana. Love it. Swifty. So I'm going Spellbreaker over the Hero Precinct one here because uh, it, you know, one it uses mana better, but two, if they have like a, a Benelish Marshal, I'm going to want to be able to kill the Benelish Marshal, where here, you know, just playing Hero we wouldn't necessarily be able to do that. But hopefully we can, you know, if we draw another land, we can, like, hero plus thrash, for example. Luxodon. It's annoying. So I can put them down to 12. Yeah, I think we just do that. Kill the Luxodon. Swing for six. Luxodon's really good. No, Thrash Threat's a lot better than Dahmer's Ambush. The only thing that Dahmer's Ambush does better is it gives a 1-1 counter. But it's Sorcery Speed instead of Instant Speed, which is a big downfall. And it also doesn't have the Threat part attached, which the Threat part is, is really crucial. It's like... For example, that last game we played against Red, being able to make the threats and be able to play the 4-4s four was the, like the reason why we won that one, that second game. Frisky Biscuits with that resub. Thanks, Frisky Biscuits. Sub number six on the day. Thanks for that support. I really appreciate it. Yep, Aurelia Buff Vindicator. That seems like a good option. Mm -hmm. 
No, I'm doing the pack the pack openings every every ten. Whenever we hit our sub goal. So I'm opening the pack. So only one card left for our opponent, which is which is good news for us. Really hope it's not something that like blows the game open, you know. Really hope it's not like a um like the the formation, unbreakable formation. I like our chances for this next turn if we can survive here. Well, that was like the second worst card for us to see besides Unbreakable Formation. That was the second worst. Interesting attack. Attack doesn't make any sense at all. Please do it. Just go to attacks. There you go. Go ahead. Yep. It's probably good to attack with all those. It's pretty baffling. I don't... Do they have a one-mana pump spell? They gotta have a one-mana pump spell. Because otherwise they'll just be putting themselves dead. Well, in case they do have the one-mana pump spell, I have to block here. They gotta have, like, the one-mana give their creature plus two, plus two, and, like, gain two life or something. It's the only reason why they, to make that attack. Um, so blocking the knight, I mean, that's still like nine. So that's one, two, th three, four. So they have four blockers, like one, two, three, four. These two things that come through. Our best chance of winning next turn is not blocking knight. So didn't they just put themselves dead in the air? I'm missing something here. Pretty sure my opponent just put themselves dead. Even in the air and everything. Huh. So there yeah, no no healing salve. Alright, Dawnbringer, Clarion, Knight of Autumn. Basically the same sideboarding we just did. I could see Dom like if we have Hero Precinct One. Even if we don't, I could definitely see Domri. Maybe I want less Thrash Threat here. 
Maybe less maybe less of this at Johnny. Like Tajik. I don't know, maybe maybe a maybe Domri's better for this matchup than a Johnny is. Cause it can like maybe that fighting is better. But they can also pump a large like a team that goes wide and everything. I'll just play two lava coils. It's fine. I'll take out Vindicator for the other one. Alright, game two on the draw. We will keep. No, yeah, Balding Yeti's not our opponent. <laughs> Want to thrash anything? I guess because of Venerate Luxodon and Conclave Tribunal, all that kind of stuff, trying to get trades in is good. So why not attack with both? Because we can like try to keep them from attacking with all these things also. Like so basically we get to do damage, but then also prevent us from taking damage. You know, like Basically, two, if they just take it, you know, two extra damage to them is not really worth seven damage to me kind of thing. That was a great turn for them. Alright, I guess I shouldn't have attacked at all. Ugh, that's, that's a lot of damage. I want to draw a land the next turn for Dawnbringer. We're already going down to two here, assuming they have nothing. Oh no! Never mind, I'm dead. I'm I'm exactly dead. I forgot about the bodyguard being pumped. Oh, I need to kill one of these things instead. Uh, I forgot about the bodyguard being pumped. That was a great hand for them. <clears throat> Give you that. We just had two lands. To trade any any one of these cards in our hand for another land, for like a green land. Any of these cards. 
Doesn't matter which one. I like seeing Lawn Rune Enforcer because that's a card I can kill. Is it better to kill Lawn Rune Enforcer or... Snubhorn Sentry? Probably the Enforcer. What's up, Kurtash? Ugh, history is so good. So good. Yeah, we won't answer to other guilds. Why don't why don't you think we should be aggressive in this match? We're on the play. We have a better battlefield than they do right now. We have nothing in our hand. They have a lot of things. Like they have a lot a lot of things to like play and get a better battlefield. Pressuring them gets permanence off the battlefield also, which makes Snubhorn Sentry worse and makes Legion's Landing worse. If they trade, if they do any trades. Makes Venerate Luxodon, Conclave Tribunal, makes those cards worse. Let's history Benalia tokens having vigilance also. This is tough. Just do this. My hero precinct one dying is rough. No, we just let Domri die, I guess. Just see myself out then. Man, and they get to protect Marshall. That's incredible. Let's 
It's incredible. I need to just draw better than Legionnaire. Sack Dauntless Bodyguard. <laughs> uh, can I get you earlier? Uh, I need you way earlier with that history banalia. So I don't have two white mana for Lyra Dawnbringer or even Feather right now. Uh, Deafening Clarion doesn't kill anything with two Benelish Marshals in play. History, then Benelish Marshal, then Benelish Marshal. That's just really tough to beat. Especially when we mold and had a five lander. To be fair, we've drawn really well since our five lander, but not, not going to be what they have. Especially a Dauntless Bodyguard to protect every Benelish Marshal. Snowboard Sultry is so great too. One mana five five. Just one mana five fives. Pretty nice. Dang. We're playing so many close games, they're just not going our way. That second game, you know, obviously that last game we just got it we got destroyed, but Well yeah, we have we have Deafening Clarions in our sideboard to try to be able to play like a, a control part, but we had a crappy mulligan. Our hand was awful. We had like one land and then five lands, or like our two two hands. Like, what were we supposed to do about that? I have the I've been playing just the four, like as far as Dreadhorde goes. I just been playing four color. I haven't played Absan. This hand's not any good. I mean, it's it's good if we draw White Source. Okay, well now it now it can be good. <clears throat> now we need them not to have any removal. Well, I can't let my feather just die to a lava coil, so I got to... I got to wait a turn to play feather. No, we didn't see any Clarions that match, that previous one. And we, Knight of Autumn's like our other card there, and found that one. Too late as well. Like, we need to have Knight of Autumn before History Benali does. Pumps their whole team.
So maybe they don't have another removal spell? They did have the coil, it's unfortunate, but maybe we'll get fortunate and they don't have another removal spell. Scry top is a bad sign. So I think I have to take out Sahili, and I want blockers. This means I'm not taking out Electromancer. I could I could have thrashed Electromancer and Integrity Feather and taken out Sahili. But then I don't have any blockers at all, and they would just be able to hit me with like those seven very easily. No, Matthew, it's not wrong to consider a GoFundMe for that. That's what GoFundMe's are for. To save businesses. So we're down to six. But then coil doesn't kill me though. Or coil doesn't kill either of my creatures with this block. If I have either of these creatures block the Phoenix, then I can't save that can't save them from a coil. Oh, we're in a tough spot. Tough spot.
guess I should have just done the feather. I was kind of, I was really considering, sorry about not saying anything here. I was really considering like mentoring onto the feather, um, all that kind of stuff. I, I really want to cast this. I really want to be able to cast the intervention and gain three life, but it doesn't really like just didn't really work to do that. Like I was definitely considered just doing that to kill the Electromancer instead, but like if I cast intervention to kill the Electromancer, I don't I don't get to do anything else with, with my whole turn. And then, like, the feather dies to a lava coil, and, like, you know, we're kind of in trouble. All right, now I will have Aurelia block the Phoenix here. Uh, with I don't need to really worry about Lava Coil with me having another Aurelia. So we're dead to a Lightning Strike for this turn. Okay, no Lightning Strike. And just try to kill our opponent next turn or be more defensive for a turn we'll be more defensive for a turn so, you know I could have Colossus there and really set it up but they're still gonna be at eight I think we're gonna be okay yay I think we had that okay going to game two that was a close one so it's gonna be interventioning during combat, I didn't want to kill the Arclight before combat. I didn't want them to be able to just spend their spells and get their Arclight Phoenix back. So we need these coils. We need the Dawnbringer. I think just those. I don't I don't really want to Clarion. I do like Tajik here. I think a Johnny. Yeah, not too big on a Johnny. I guess I've when I've played this matchup before, I've actually liked Rhythm of the Wild to like have my creatures not die to shock like all these things like 10th district legionnaire swift blade vindicator hero precinct one uh tajik also like they all enter and die to shock i actually think i like rhythm Um, so yeah, I, I wasn't bringing in Lava Coil before, because before when I was playing it, I had Baffling End in my deck, and Baffling End's not as good. I'm going to just take out the Vindicators, though. They'll still die to Shock, and I'll take out one Tajik here on the draw, and then uh, one of these kind of things, uh, maybe a Thrash, a Thrash or a Collision, with having the extra Lava Coils in, I'll take out a Thrash. Okay. Yeah, Gideon Blackblade would be good in this deck against against control matchups. I could I could certainly see it in the sideboard. It's a it's a strong card against control. Um against like removal heavy decks. I I haven't struggled as much against those matchups so far though. Most of my losses with this deck have been against aggro, against mono red and mono white. And that's we lost to both of those earlier and uh, previously. The other couple of leagues I've played with the deck, those are the two decks in particular I've struggled against. So 
So I, I guess I think I need more for those matchups. and probably need more Knight of Autumns in my sideboard. It's been the card. I only have two. I, I think I need more of those. I've been losing to like Frenzy and History of Banalia and all that kind of stuff. Mm. No land is rough. If I, if I got the land, I was going to just play the Rhythm of the Wild, probably. And just make it so, like, these, you know, make that so, like, Spellbreaker would be a 5-5, five, five, Feather would be a 5-5. Five, five, or, you know, be 5 Toughness. Make it so Hero wouldn't die to Shock. All that kind of stuff. This is a, a nice turn to be able to play that Rhythm. Come on, deck, where's the lands? Land? Okay, finally. Um... So now we're staring down a 3-4 that's going to get bigger. If I don't play the rhythm this turn, I'm just saying I'm never going to play it. So basically, do they have Lava Coil? Can I play a 4-4? Four, four? I think I've kind of missed my turn, considering it's turn five already. I think I've kind of missed my chance for Rhythm of the Wild, now that they have the Crackling Drake. <laughs> you don't like these colors at all? The brown and the neon shades. Hopefully they don't have dive down. Good. Getting that thing out of here really important. So that was the main reason why I wanted to play the Spellbreaker the previous turn, is because I wanted to be able to thrash, like the next turn I wanted to thrash this Drake. Could of course gone for the really high upside of like play Feather first. But I just want to get Crackling Drake out of there. I'm not trying to, not trying to do too much. Green White Johnny's been pretty good. I'm I don't know which Johnny I, I want still, but it, it really did help against the red matchup. It really helped our red matchup, which is kind of a tough matchup. And the green white Johnny definitely helped that. 
And no, I don't care about trying to save that 1-1 one, one and kill the Electromancer. I'm, I'm more worried about these things. If it's a challenge um, you want, then a challenge you'll get. So we're going to attack with three four-power creatures next turn. We're going to go sp Spellbreaker Haste and Mentor onto the Spellbreaker with the Aurelia. And I'll have the Integrity also. So presumably, like, the Phoenix will trump the Aurelia, and then they'll just kind of block, like, these things, and then... Do I have your attention now? Oh, no. Never mind. That's not going to happen. Sure. Yeah. All right. Well, that's a great. That's great for us. Unless they have like lava coil. I mean, even they have lava coil. I guess lava coil. It doesn't really save them. I mean, if they have obviously if they have six points of burn upstairs. They have like double lightning strike, but whatever. All right, so if they have, wait, so we should still have this, right? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, Coil makes a blocker, but it doesn't it doesn't keep them alive because of the trample. So they can make another blocker right here with radical idea. <clears throat> but they're still dead. So we're gonna be two and three. Not so bad. Had had some close losses and everything. For Top part of Mythic with the Naya Feather Brew being two and three with close losses. Not so bad. I'll just do it on the Hexproof one. And that's nine. Good old integrity. Standard staples, thrash threat, integrity intervention. Getting it done. Together, we'll create great things, you and I. Yeah, this deck is really sweet. It's a fun one to play. <laughs> I didn't even bring in Harpooner that match. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, we need more Knight of Autumn in this deck. Let's get a third Knight of Autumn and just take out Harpooner. We don't need Harpooner, let's be honest. We don't need that card. There's just not mono... Like, mono blue is just not a thing anymore. Yeah, so you don't need it. And yeah, definitely get this third Knight of Autumn in here. There we go, that's better. Um... But yeah, mono red, mono white are still two of the tougher matchups. Whoops. With this deck. But it plays really well. It really does. We, we didn't do a whole lot with Vindicator. We did we did some though. Like Vindicator helped us win the game one against Mono White. Um Lyra Dawnbringer is just really hard for for those two decks, mono red and mono white, to deal with. It does cost a lot of mana, which is a problem. But I still like it. Because it takes over the game there. Um, so, uh, yeah, I was thinking about making a Mar I'm probably going to make a Mardu midrange for tomorrow. I was already thinking about that. But it probably won't be Feather. But it'd be Hero, Precinct 1, yeah, Soren, uh, Dreadhorde Butcher, Angrath. Yeah, I was thinking about a Mardu a Mardu mid-range hero precinct one deck that could be pretty cool. So I'll put that together for tomorrow. Um, 
yeah so that's that's naya feather that was a lot of fun to play uh two three so we, yeah we ended up two and three i guess i should update that um but we had some real close ones like all three of the losses were were close you know and and uh the deck's a lot of fun to play it's something different and has some real explosive starts and everything okay uh, if you're watching this video later on on YouTube, hope you hit that like button and the subscribe button over there. But thank you very much for watching Naya Feather here. That's it for the video, and I hope to see you for another video. Take care.